Um, so now I would like to introduce Marilyn Heiss. Marilyn is a native New Yorker. She now lives in San Francisco. In addition to being a Jewish educator, she's an Emmy Award winning editor um, who has been working in the TV and film industry for quite some time. And um, Marilyn is also a proud Torah chanting, minion going to filin wearing woman and participates in meditation practice and is involved in the Jewish community in many ways. And she is going to be teaching, teaching us or talking to us a little bit now about her work with middle school students at Peninsula Temple Beth El in San Mateo. So take it away, Marilyn. Uh, thank you. So hi, everyone. So yes, yeah, so I, um, I have this class that I've taught actually twice this year um, called What's Jewish About Social Justice. Um, it's a eighth, ninth grade elective in a program seemingly very similar to Deborah's. It's a supplementary synagogue program. Um, this is an elective that these kids have to choose. So actually, I need a much pithier name for it. Um, and Ed, if you can go to the next slide so you can see what it wrote. Um, and it's, um, so I have seven weeks, it's a 50 minute class, they take two classes a night. And again, similar to Deborah, I have 12 registered, but it's a, you know, it's, it's a crapshoot on who shows up. So, um, which is always a challenge when you're trying to figure out curriculum that will work individually for each kid who shows up whenever they show up, but the ones who go the entire way um, also need to get something out of it. And so the, this class itself on the next slide, you'll see it's, um, I had seven sessions and I'm gonna cover the intro here, but I did modern slavery, global hunger, labor rights, where I also use some JWA curriculum, fair trade, climate change, not exactly a social issue, but it was something they wanted to talk about. Um, and I asked them about that. I've done things on immigration. I did um, hunger in America in another class that I've given in this class. And the last one, which we'll do tomorrow night, is how to take action. So um, the, I really wanted to give them something as an intro class to just get them thinking, which is what I want to do. And so I found curriculum on the Living the Legacy, and I combined two parts of it. I have used the Living the Legacy Labor Unit 1, Lesson 1, Part 1, which is about defining basic needs. And I wove into that curriculum some resources that I found in the civil rights side on part four of the lesson two, unit one, of what's Jewish about justice. So if you can go to the next slide. So this, 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 this lesson plan starts with what they call big ideas. So you have, these are words that I got from the curriculum on JWA. Um, there are more words. I chose these. You can add your own. The nice thing about using these is JWA gives you these already formatted as handouts, one word on a page to use in the lesson plan. So anytime I can get resources where I don't have to generate them, I am a happy teacher. So um, I took those and what we did is I have my classes set up in a horseshoe and the kids usually sit on the outside. So on the inside, I took these um, words, each on a piece of paper, put them in the inside and they walked around and the, what they were told to do is just write one word. When you see that word, what, do, what first comes to mind? And if you'll go to the next slide, you'll see some examples of what they wrote. And it's very interesting. If you look down at the labor, actually somebody, and these are all boys, I have to tell you. They wrote <laughs> birth, okay? So the fact that they came, they, had, they have job opportunities. In choice, you'll see marriage because that's what's in their form you know, in now. Um, so it gives you, it gives them an idea to start thinking, and in retrospect, as always, it'll give me an idea of who these kids are. I mean, I loved enjoy. One of them wrote solitude, sleep. So it really gives me a chance to also, as much as get them thinking, let me see who they are. So on the, so they took that, they took it back to their seats, and I asked them just write, just you know, stream of consciousness. What does this mean to you? And again, it's really nice to see what they come up with when you don't lead them very much. So fresh air about life not becoming stagnant. You know, rights, if you don't have these, you won't have anything else, you won't succeed. And the fact that one of them came up with culture that it's when you're a part of something bigger than yourself. So it's really nice to see these thoughts come from them and me not giving it to them. And while they're writing this, I then put out um, these, these are, the, these are the slides, these are the papers that I got from the civil rights side of what's Jewish about justice. Again, already formatted, already out. You just have to print them out. And I picked, these are four of them. There are 10 of them. 
And what I did after they wrote what they thought about those words, I had them get up again and walk around and look at these quotes and pick one of those that called to them. And they were, I let them in th with the words when they chose one, they each had to choose one. I let them, I had different copies. So if two people or three people wanted to pick the same quote, that was fine. But they went around, they read them, they took them back to their seats. And I asked them to read it and underline the words that popped out to them, that meant something to them, that really gave the essence of what the quote was about. And then I asked them to um, take those words, the word that they had that chosen in the big ideas, and maybe something that they had written, and to write a found poem, which is a poem. This is in the curriculum from the labor unit. It's a poem made up of just the words that you've gotten, so they don't have to generate it themselves. And I think what was most important is I modeled it for them. So I picked, my word was need, and on the upper left-hand side, there's my chicken scratch of what I wrote as far as what I felt was need, and I focused on the difference between need and want, and that was my stream of consciousness. And then on the right, to the right there, you'll see that was what I chose, and there's my underlinings and what stuck out to me tradition, create, relationships. And there's my poem. And the poem is nice to give them. It gives them a chance of a poem doesn't have to rhyme. It doesn't, you know, it can just be lyrical. It can just be the words thrown out, but there is a point to it. And I think this really made a really big difference in what, what I got back. And so you'll see, if you go to the next slide, this is, I have three student examples. So this student actually did exactly what I asked them to do of incorporating everything. He chose choice. Um, he wrote on the upper, he wrote his thing, the power to choose is important and that, and he wrote there that we make our own decisions. And then he wove in the Jewish side to it, of uh, there it's liberation. And there's his poem that we share a communal freedom of our own choice. Um, freedom, liberation, equal opportunity. So it's really, he wove them in, in his, and our personal choice is freedom. And so it really doesn't, it, he got them all in. In the next student example, this student only used, um, only used the quotes, but he, it's very, something very interesting happened here. I see, you can see he's underlined things like we suffered injustice, we've been the victims. But in his poem, he added the word all. We are all suffered justice, we are all victims. And that was a refrain. And what was nice to see is he took what a quote that was centered on Judaism and was able to take that and bring it into you know, a more global thought, which I thought, again, that's part of what the class is about. So that was a really a wonderful thing for me to be able to see. And in the last example I have for you, this is a student who read this. He actually only took one set of words, work towards a perfected world. But he took what this quote is about human beings have the power to return the world to its original perfection and that ultimate redemption. And he wrote what I think is this beautiful poem of humans working towards a perfect world. Now we are learning how to make our world anew. The end is only the beginning. So I really love this curriculum because it really gave the kids a wide swath of what they could do. Some of them, you know, need very concrete. Here's what you need to do. Write these words. It gave them an entrance into the lesson plan, as well as those who may be more creative or want to do something. It also set them up for what the class is going to be about, that they're not just going to be sitting there, that they are going to be participating. If that's the only class that one kid came to, that kid got something. He got something about Jewish and social justice and think about big ideas. Yet for the ones who come to the whole thing, they are set up. And it also gives me an idea as I, as I pick these up after class to know who's in my class, how their minds maybe are working, and let's gives me a window into how to plan the rest of the lessons because I have a better idea of who they are. Great. Thanks so much, Marilyn. Can everybody hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. So um, I just want to open up the floor to anyone who has questions for Marilyn and also um, if you have a question for Deborah that you didn't get a chance to ask before because the sound wasn't working properly, feel free to um, address those to us now. We'd love to hear your questions or comments about uh, this work. Marilyn? Yeah. Um, this is Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Um, I'm just curious. 
Hi. <laughs> I'm just curious about whether you referred back to this lesson as you continued on with the class and whether you were able to incorporate JWA material in some of these other segments of your class. Um, absolutely. Actually, tomorrow night is our last class, and I'm going to actually bring these in and kind of tie it together along with bringing them organizations, Jewish and otherwise, where they can take action. I did use um, the Jewish Women Archives labor stuff in some of my in one of in the labor issue when we talked about Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire, um, which I also tied to what's happening in Bangladesh, both in December with the fire and what happened with the building now, and um, got great credibility when one kid came to class and said, "Oh yeah, we just you know we discussed that in school this week, Marilyn, and I knew all about it." And um, so I was able to do that. And it does get very timely. I will tell you that one of my students, when we did Modern Slavery um, in the fall when I did this class, and on the California ballot, there was a uh, proposition about human trafficking. And I had this 14-year-old boy come into my class, and he was like, Marilyn, Marilyn, did you see what was on the on that ballot? Did you see the proposition? And I don't know that a 14-year-old boy in San Mateo would have been aware of what was happening on that ballot if we hadn't talked about modern slavery and what was happening. Um, so it was a really proud moment, I have to say.